let's talk about my M1 MacBook Pro experience. You're seeing all these clickbait titles right now for the M1 Max, MacBook Pro, 16 and 14 inch. But let's read a few of these right now. Why I'm returning my M1 MacBook Pro. Why the M1 Max is a waste of money. Go for the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Do you need 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of RAM? Does it beat out the Intel Max or PCs? Here's another clickbait title for you. This thing surprised me. So I saw this deal on Best Buy. It was an open box. I'm not above good savings. I bought the M1 Max MacBook Pro, 32 gigs of RAM with one terabyte SSD. I got it and I immediately threw everything I had at it. Canon R5, 8K and 4K C-Log footage, the most strenuous footage that my 2019 MacBook could not run or barely could run at all. This thing breezed through the timeline in Premiere Pro. Then I added a color grade, no problems. At this point I was already amazed, so I threw some A7S III footage in there and not to my surprise, flawless. I had no delays even at full resolution playback. And at this point you're saying to yourself, come on, there's gotta be some thing that isn't right with it, that doesn't work well. And honestly, I don't have anything. Maybe, the only thing is After Effects. After Effects is not optimized yet for the M1 chip, which does suck. It's about the same speed as my late 2019 MacBook Pro, and it works the pretty much the exact same, maybe a little bit faster, just because of the, the feel between Premiere Pro and it. But I'm fairly confident and hopeful they'll make After Effects optimized for the M1 chip, which I, I don't know why they wouldn't or why that's not even like, that, that's gonna happen. It has to happen. Please make it happen. All right, now let's take a minute and talk about the actual computer itself, like the feel, the ports, all that kind of stuff. Finally, we have all of our ports back. That was the, the thing I hated the most about the late 2019, 16 MacBook Pro is getting rid of that. We have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left side of the computer where it should be. Personal preference, you know, your mouse over here and then you have to cross the thing over. It should be on the left-hand side, always on the left-hand side. We have an HDMI port back, which is nice if you're using a HDMI monitor or if you wanna connect to a TV or you're doing presentations or things like that, which is so nice not to have to carry a dongle around for that and forget it or what, what have you. Three USB-C Thunderbolt ports, awesome. Four would've been nice, but I'll take three in an HDMI port. That's That works for me. And thank God, thank God, a UHS two SD card slot. That is, that's exactly, that, I mean, it's just so nice to be able to just throw an SD card in and, and start working. That, that just makes a huge difference. It's the best thing to have that. The keyboard is smooth and pretty quiet, no complaints there. The trackpad is huge. I mean, I don't know if it's any bigger than the other trackpad, but it feels, it looks bigger. The sound quality is great. The, I don't use FaceTime or anything on there, practically, I mean, maybe for a Zoom call, but I don't really care about the quality of that, but you have a 1080p camera on the screen now, which is nice. I, I mean, I'll take it over 720, so no qualms, but I, didn't really care about that, but it's nice to have. I'll be doing some graphic design stuff or motion graphics and After Effects or Adobe Illustrator or even Photoshop for that matter. And no fans, running multiple you know, creative apps at one time. Also, the battery just keeps on going. It, it doesn't just go from full to like 25% in 15 minutes once those fans kick up. So that's a huge plus. The battery has to be bigger than the 16 because it's a bigger body. So I would assume that. I don't know that for sure, but I'm gonna say that it's gonna last you longer. So go with the 16, personal preference, but I, I would agree. So let's talk about the screen for a second. It has truer blacks, it looks better, the refresh rate's awesome. What really makes a difference is the color accuracy. This is the first time that I've used my actual MacBook screen, not in a clamshell mode for my like desktop setup, where I'll actually keep it next to it and use that as my reference monitor and my color grading monitor next to my you know big monitor for editing and things like that. All around, this is an amazing tool for any creative who's on the go or needs a powerhouse to be able to do big projects and be able to take it with you. Being able to have a creative tool that, that doesn't break the bank, you know, at 3,400 bucks, 3,500 bucks, if you get one open box, it's like 300 bucks off, which is really nice. All I've ever wanted is something that I can just seamlessly go through a timeline and add color grades and, and, and effects to and not have to be bogged down and spend you know, $10,000, $15,000 on these computers that are obsolete in six months to a year. This is something that is almost 
a little bit future proof. Being able to shoot 8K footage in Canon log and not worrying about it destroying your computer and just, you know, basically kicking you off. Like the Canon footage would crash my 2019 MacBook Pro. Premiere Pro would just shut down and it would just like shut down my computer and I had to start everything back up again. It's hard on hard drives, it's hard on your computer. It feels like it's breaking and that's not a good feeling when you are when you just spent, you know, 35 to $4,000 on, on a computer and it's just crashing on you. So it's just nice to have something that does the job it's meant to do, not have any problems with it, I mean, as of yet. The question I think that everyone asks themselves, and I know I ask myself this too, is should you up? Grade. The number one thing I always say is if it's within your budget and you see a need, there's no point in waiting for the next version to come out. If something is gonna make your job easier, absolutely, I think that you should spend the money on it if you have the means to do so. If it makes that export time a minute faster, or it makes being able to start and stop a project in a 45 minute window instead of like three hours because you can just blow through a timeline. Those are big deals. And just to summarize, it's fast, it's a joy to use, it's handled everything that I've thrown at it so far, and we'll try to keep throwing things at it that it can and can't handle so we can see what it does and doesn't do. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got some good information out of this. Leave me a comment down below, subscribe if you want to, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.